Hello once again here, Rick Gideon doing some videos this evening before I go outside and do a little bit of yard work. All my, my tractors broke down, everything broke down, my weed whackers broke, everything's broke. So I'm going to have to figure out something to do when I'm done here. But Anyways, concerning Jerusalem being end time Babylon and being the headquarters of the beast in the latter days actually shows that the beast will be attacking Jerusalem and his armies in the book of Joel or further in Zechariah chapter 14 and half the city will be in captivity so he will not have the city under his realm he will try to destroy the city but it will not be his capital and there are some people out there that believe that uh, the seven mountains on which the woman sits, Mystery Babylon, which they say is Jerusalem, are the seven hills of Jerusalem. This can be quickly uh, thrown out as false. First of all, the book of Revelation was signified or put in symbols. And throughout the Bible, a mountain is considered or or is symbolized as a kingdom. You can find that in Zechariah chapter 4. O great mountain, who are you before Zerubbabel? You'll become a plain. I will destroy you. So talking about the beast kingdom or the talking about Babylon being as a kingdom, as a mountain being crushed by Jesus Christ. Uh, the mountain in Daniel chapter 2 that struck the statue, the image of the four great Gentile empires, crushed it, became like chaff, and blew away in the wind till nothing was left of it. And the stone that was cut out without hands became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. This is all symbolic and figurative language. Now, Jerusalem sits on seven hills. Correct. But we have a problem here when we come to Revelation chapter uh, 17. And as we'll go to Daniel and take a look at some scriptures, there's an eighth mountain that appears from the seven or the seventh. So you have a total. Now you have eight. How could the seven mountains on which the woman sits be the seven hills of Jerusalem when an eighth one comes along and is the consummate of all the other ones. So that scripture is false. Let's just quickly read Revelation chapter 17 starting in verse 8. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now verse 9. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. As a witness to you, that is the current EU. Most Bible scholars believe, or supposed Bible scholars, believe that this seventh beast is the, the EU, is the last revived empire, but they always forget about the eighth. Verse 11, the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to per perdition. So you have seven and you add one, it's eight. So it can't literally mean seven hills, the seven hills of Jerusalem. Because now you're dealing with an eighth beast now that has no woman riding on it. Because in Revelation chapter 17 and verses 15 through 17, the beast and the ten nations that will give their authority to him, will have this woman annihilated. It will be the final judgment of the Catholic Church and false Christianity as a whole, whatever is left of it. And this is in the future. We've got four trumpet judgments coming. We have the sealing of 144,000, a symbolic number, coming out of the tribes of Israel. Then you have the tribulation, where a innumerable multitude will come out from all peoples, languages, tongues, and will wash their robes in the, in the great tribulation for 
through Jesus Christ, not denying his name. Let's go to Daniel here and let's see I forgot to mark the verse here so be uh, be patient with me here okay let's start in let's go back and just start in chapter 7 let's start in verse 1 in the first year of uh, Belshazzar king of Babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed then he wrote down the dream telling the main facts Daniel spoke saying I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea each different from the other the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted it up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man on land and a man's heart was given to it so it stood on its two feet like a man so we're talking about a symbolic beast and the first one that comes up ends up looking like a man so we know it th these are kingdoms symbol symbolized in beasts but they're kingdoms ruled by men human kingdoms Gentile kingdoms going on here and suddenly another beast a second like a bear it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth and they said thus to it arise devour much flesh after this I looked and there was another like a leopard which had on its back four wings of a bird the beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it so the sons of Alexander the Great as history knows after this I saw in the night visions of behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible exceedingly strong it had huge iron teeth it was devouring and breaking in pieces and trans trampling the residue with its feet it was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had, it had ten horns ten horns okay let's go on I was considering the horns and there was another horn a little one coming up among them now we have 11 we have 11 horns they saw 10 kingdoms now we have 11 so I get a sip of water here 10 kings 10 horns now we have another horn coming up 10 plus 1 is 11 let's go on and read and there a little one coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots and there in this horn were eyes so now we have eleven and three were plucked up let's see what that adds up to and there in the horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and mouth speaking pompous words so this is the end time beast as we will see I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand, excuse me, a thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Angels the court was seated and the books were opened now verse 11 I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking okay the horn now suddenly becomes a beast I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame as for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time so this horn is described here in the end as a beast that is slain and given over to the burning flame but when this beast arises you have eleven and then he pulls three up by the roots eleven minus three gives you eight gives you eight so we're talking here seven revived Roman empires in which the Catholic Church is in existence 
you now have the EU, the seventh revived, many Bible scholars proclaim, which Bible prophecy, as we read in Revelation, is going to continue a short time. And then you have an eighth beast, as it witnesses here in Daniel chapter 7. An eighth beast, which will be destroyed in the end by the burning flame. Actually, the human beast and his false prophet will be cast alive into the lake of fire. So, once again, seven mountains, seven hills of Jerusalem? No. Seven kingdoms, the eighth beast of Revelation, described as a beast, the little horn, the eighth, the uh, eleventh horn, which ends up being the eighth horn, and described as a beast given over to the burning flame. No, the seven hills of Jerusalem are not those seven mountains of Revelation chapter 17 and verses 9 and 10. As a witness to you, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening.